Good morning, everybody, and welcome. This is Lancashire Business Week. I'm Richard Slater, and you join us today for the second of our Business Week Breakfast Blast sessions. On behalf of Lancashire Business View and our headline sponsor, CG Professional, I'm delighted to welcome you all. Our promise for the whole of Lancashire Business Week is to deliver you timely pieces of insight backed by experience and expertise. Information you can ponder and be inspired by, or in the words of our editor, Jed Henderson, this is news that you can use. To that end, we have lined up more than 30 top speakers to inform, educate and entertain. Lord Reith would be proud of us. Our speakers are here to answer my questions and to answer yours too. You can send us those questions to the chat box. Please do not be shy. Yesterday, our focus was on the opportunities and challenges facing the county. And as we progress through the week, that focus will shift to well-being and inclusivity, which is tomorrow, leadership and change on Thursday, and on Friday, which is Lancashire Day, it's aspiration and celebration, and you are invited to them all. Today, though, our thematic double bill is jobs and skills. The nature of work is always changing, and skills requirements change too. New roles emerge, new skills are needed to fulfil them. And as our businesses adapt to new market needs, we need to ensure they have work-ready personnel with the flexibility to adapt to fast-changing circumstances. Today, we draw together the employers who provide the jobs and those who help provide the skills, though in truth, most of our guests today have feet in both camps. Would you please welcome our first guests? Cam Cothier leads Blackburn-based businesses, including eBusiness UK and Time2 Technology. But he's also chair of the Board of Trustees for the Star Academies Trust, which has schools across the North, in the Midlands and in London. Cam also supports the Lord Lieutenant of Lancashire because he's a Deputy Lieutenant. Michelle Lorty jones took up the role of Director of the Lancashire Skills Hub in 2015. She's responsible for the development and the implementation of the Lancashire Skills and Employment Strategic Framework. She reports to the Lancashire LEP Skills and Employment Board. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Michelle and Cam. Well, hello and how are you both? Michelle, good to see you. How are you today? I'm good, thank you. Good to see you. Yeah, good. Cam, how are you, sir? I'm great, thank you, Richard. Good. Thanks for, thanks for having you. me. Let's start with you, if I may, Cam. I know you first as a businessman, but perhaps I, what I'd really like to know is how your business brain has contributed to an extraordinary success at Star Academies. So perhaps can you lay out for us, what is Star Academies? What are those successes I'm describing? And then perhaps you can tell me where it is your business thinking has informed it all. Sure, sure. Thank you, Richard. Okay, Star, Star Academies um, started some 15, 16 years ago, initially as a single independent school running from a terraced house in a terraced street in Blackburn. Um, very uh, much an independent school focused on a small number of students, but struggling because, um, mainly because of, you know, the, the income levels at that time. Um, it, it was serving in a community, a disadvantaged community, so fees were relatively low. Um, so the, the management at that time decided that they should um, try and go for voluntary aided status and get support from, uh, from government. Um, and they had a couple of goes, but uh, unfortunately weren't successful. So they invited a group of us, myself and one of the panelists later on, Moisa, who's going to be joining us later, and a few of us um, to try and... Uh, bring the school into the Blackburn Local Authority family of schools. And, and we had a go and unfortunately, first time round, we, we also failed. Tried again, second time round, we also failed. But, you know, um, eventually the third time we were successful and the school became part of the family. And what that meant was it brought with it all the resources and the skills from the local authority. And, and that gave, that was effectively the catapult that launched Star Academies or was Tahedal schools at that time. Very quickly, we resourced up, brought in a whole team of people and uh, within a couple of years became the best performing schools in the UK. I think, um, can I just pause you there for one second? Sure. Can you just repeat your last sentence slowly? Sure, sure. So uh, Tahedal Islam Girls High School 
which started off in a terraced house within within literally less than five years became the best performing school in the whole country for for attainment and, and basically what that meant was somebody coming into the school from uh, year seven leaving at 11 had the best opportunities in life uh, at this little school in Blackburn. So you, you're right, Richard, sometimes we sort of just accept that, but that is a, a, an amazing achievement. And, you know, the, the credit has got to go to the senior leadership team at their schools. Anyway, back to, you know, from uh, that one school, we then expanded to another school in Blackburn, which is the boys' school. We then opened the, the primary school. And what really kicked off Star Academies was the government's free schools program. So our initial, uh, you know, and, and, and you, you talk about business and, you know, the business skills coming into an environment like education. Um, well, one of the things that we realized was um, when we had this opportunity presented itself, we had to pivot very, very quickly to take advantage of, of an opportunity that was there for a, sh you know, for a very small period of time. So, um, and we were blessed with having a, a great CEO in, in Mufti Hamid Patel and some great senior leaders who were very, very focused on delivering um, educational excellence. So with this school performing the best in the country, that gave us the leverage to go to government and say, look, you know, we've got a great school here and we can replicate that many times over. So we then applied for a couple of schools and, you know, believe me, we had to jump through many many hoops and you know we had a lot of hurdles along the way but you know we, we were successful in uh, being awarded three schools initially believe it was one in Blackburn one in sorry it was a secondary in Blackburn a primary in Blackburn and a primary in London believe it or not in, in Hackney so that was our first wave of schools and you know from there on um, we, we just increased the number of schools and as you said earlier we uh, built the hub in the northwest in the midlands in london and now we're flourishing in yorkshire how we've also schools, added how many schools in the, in the network now you know, so, so far we now have uh, 29 and counting um and um as, as you said that you know these are throughout the uk um but not, not only just free schools and not only faith schools so about 40 40 percent of our schools uh what were normal community schools that became academies and joined us uh, and joined the star academies family um so, so so you know we have schools you know with all kinds of demographics um you know from all girls faith schools to some very challenging schools in areas like Bradford, in Blackpool, and uh, so, so a good mixture of schools now. Um, altogether now, you know, so, so from that standing start, uh, now we have, uh, we, we serve somewhere like 17, 18,000 pupils and have over 2,000 staff around the country with, with, a, with a substantial budget to manage uh, on an annual basis. Cam, so what we've, we've got, we've got these extraordinary results coming through from the schools in Blackburn. And I think just in, in its own context, extraordinary results from a school in Blackburn is an extraordinary story in itself that you then push that out and replicate it. That really becomes quite a thing. In the context of today's conversation, we're talking about skills and jobs. And I wonder this, um, Cam, do you see it as part of the role of um, the Star Academies Trust to prepare young people for the world of work do you, or do you see that as somebody else's job no 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 um it's absolutely the responsibility of a school to prepare you know all our children not not just for work but for life and um our, our, our core philosophy is is simple and one of the our, our pillars is educational excellence and of course we're a school so that has to be um our number one priority but there's a purpose behind that and um, when we f you know, first set up, we spent a very, very long time in crafting out the purpose of the school. And, you know, and not just that one school, but as we expanded. Um, and that mission, you know, 15, 16 years on, still stands to the word. So, um, and, and as I say, the core to that is educational excellence. Now, what, what, is, you know, uh, what is all that for? Well, well first of all, we, we strongly believe that uh, an excellent education gives a child the best opportunity in life. So very, very focused on educational achievement. And, you know, we get accused of being over-focused on that, but we're making an apology for that because by, you know, when, it, when, when a child leaves our school, 
we know that they've got the best opportunity they could have had and they're reaching their potential. Um, so what does that give you? First and foremost, it gives you increased in employability, right? So, um, and, and uh, you know, there are lots of things you can do in a school that would help a child in improving that in, uh, and increasing that employability. So one of the things, you know, in terms of, of the overall, um, you know, our, our school, so every one of our schools, for example, you know, has a leadership specialism. And that's leadership of all kinds, from performance leadership to moral leadership, you know, through to um, civic leadership. And by employing those uh, skills and, in, you, know, and in, you know, inculcating those skills throughout the curriculum, what we're doing is we're giving each of our children the opportunity to, to improve their leadership skills. And that could be through community service, through leading uh, a specific project, through debating, through speaking skills. So all of those skills are part of the curriculum which we inculcate. It is interesting, Cam. I've, I've spoken, I've been, I've, I've visited as well, I've spoke, spoken about this. It's the, you are introducing the um, kinds of projects into schools that frankly I'd love to see introduced in uh, across all schools, that idea of present your work to your peers, I, th I think is a, is a great thing. And I know that you're, you're big on that. Um, if I may, I'm going to come to you, Michelle. Michelle, if Cam, Cam and Star Academy is take responsibility to a certain point up to the age of, Cam, am I right, up to 16? Is that so? And, and yeah. six form, yeah, up to 16. And, and six form as well. Yeah, and six form as well in some of our schools, yeah. Um, so that and, and Cam sees what he does as being part of the, 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 the world of skills and jobs. And I'm wondering, uh, your role at the Employment and Skills Hub, your job is to, to balance skills and employment priorities. With all the confusion that we have, and we, we've, we have coronavirus and we have at the end of the EU transition period looming, how do you forward plan this, Michelle, and who guides your thinking? Yeah, thanks, Richard. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously, we're living in interesting times at the moment. So I thought it might be useful just to give you some headlines and the data, because a key part of our role at the moment is tracking the impact of coronavirus on the economy in terms of the labour market and um, what that looks like. And we are seeing a significantly different picture across different sectors, different geographies, and also for different groups of people as well. Um, so if I give you some of the headlines, for example, um, in terms of furlough, so our new word, furlough, uh, which came up this year, um, peaked in July. So at, in July in Lancashire, we had 208,000 people on furlough, which is roughly a third of our workforce, which is, you know, pretty significant, isn't it? This dropped off in August, 61,000. So a massive drop. Um, which, you know, there was a lot of optimism in August. We had the eat out scheme, uh, business confidence was coming back. Um, that's the last data we've got from government. We're waiting for the September and October data. Um, but what was really good then was that in terms of um, that drop in furlough, it looked like people were being re-engaged by their businesses because we did not see a corresponding increase in universal credit. Um, so claims um, for people who are unemployed. Uh, we did, you know, obviously the universal credit name numbers have gone up. We've seen an almost doubling from 3.2% in March to 6.9% in May. So what does that mean in terms of numbers of people? Um, 33,000 up to 60,000. So an extra, you know, roughly uh, double um, uh, people seeking work. Um, in terms of um, the kind of impact as well, we've seen, um, you know, greater impact in the obvious sectors like tourism, hospitality, accommodation services, some aspects of manufacturing such as aerospace, really, you know, critical to the Lancashire work market. And we've also seen an adverse impact on younger people in terms of percentage furlough, percentage increase in the number of young people. Michelle, like does it become a difficult pitch when you've got all these difficulties, it become a difficult pitch to talk about um, skills and training? I don't think so. I mean, obviously, you know, um, it, it's, it's looking where the opportunities are. And I think one of the key things at the moment is for those individuals is pivoting their skills, it's reskilling, it's transferring skills, it's thinking about opportunities you may not have thought about before. Um, you know, on a vacancy side in October, 
Um, the Northwest has seen the highest growth in vacancies, even in comparison to the Southeast and London. So we've seen a 40% jump between March and October. And we've also got more vacancies than we did have this time last year. So there is a positive side to these, uh, you know, this data. The media would have us believe, you know, there's no jobs. It's a really flat job market. But don't blame me. You know? <laughs> I'm talking about the, uh, the BBC. Oh, the other the media. All right. Oh, you, Richard, you're fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> so I think, you know, we do need to break some of those myths and especially, you know, thinking about what Cam's been talking about, about our young people. You know, there's Prince's Trust research out there that young people are thinking, really flat job market, um, you know. Um, if, 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 Michelle, I'm, I'm, you know. what you say there, Michelle, is really interesting. It's talk, we're talking about pivoting skills and, and businesses are having to pivot their, you know, their skills. And the, the people Absolutely. Have, yeah. But what I think I'm interested in, Cam, surely, Cam, this is what you guys do. You create the young people. I, that's an awful way. You make <laughs> these young people and you fit them in this box. No, I don't mean that. What I mean is that you... It seems to me your ambition is to create younger people who have the flexibility and the uh, adaptability skills that should be suiting us right now. Is that fair, Cam? No, it, it, it is. Um, so, so, for example, um, you know, we, we offer a broad-based curriculum and you think, OK, well, what are the things... Um, you know, you, you, you sort of, you think about the future and say, what are the skill sets that people will need? So in, in our schools, you know, in addition to the normal, what you might call the EBAC focused curriculum, maths, English, science, et cetera. Um, Not enough music you know, in there, just saying. No, no, no uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, and, or, or arts full stop. Um, but what we also have, is, so, so we, we do encourage that as well. Uh, so that, that, you know, we do build those uh, skills into the curriculum. But at the moment, so, so, so I was talking to uh, my, my son just in preparation for the, for this, who, who's at the boys school. And, and you know, and they have, um, you know, media. And uh, I, I say media, but it's uh, more like digital marketing. You know, and to do that at the age of eleven, you know, I think it's 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 great. We also have engineering science, and um, Mo Isap, who's the the chair of governors of, of the boys' school, may be able to expand later on. But you know, they they they, they do things like CAD CAM. They, you know, they they do three D. Um, uh, 3D printing, and they do robotics, and those, and you know, and they do you know software, and those are the kind of things that I did at university. Never mind at the age of eleven, you know. So, so, you know, I, I think it's it's fantastic that other kids have those kind of opportunities, and then you sort of overlay that with you know bringing in you know uh, uh, careers guidance and bringing in speakers from different parts, you know, different industries, different specialisms, and what we're trying to do is aspire our kids aspire our children to whatever they feel that they you know where their strengths lie and what they want to do going forward so we don't box them anywhere we just give them a broad you know broad-based skill set yeah and i think i think that's where i was trying to take the idea of the, the breadth of it and i think that's what that's what impresses very very quickly for me michelle and we're going to bring our next round of guests in to join us in a second um are you seeing a difference in the way the businesses you work with grade their priorities are they looking at schools and training in a different way now than they did uh, eight months ago? I mean, we've seen a significant acceleration in the demand for digital skills, as you would imagine. Um, and that's from the ability to remotely work from home through to e-commerce, through to cyber security and everything in between. And, you know, we had a high demand for digital before. It's even higher now. So, you know, talking about what we're doing with young people in school, it's absolutely critical. Our digital natives, you know, coming through into the workforce, but that, that's where we're seeing the most significant demand. You know, we have got uh, new provisions such as digital boot camps in place, working between employers and providers to do fast track programs, to move unemployed, you know, people who've been made redundant into new digital high value roles. So there's a lot of activity going on there. I mean, even with our independent retailers, we've just launched a program now to boost Christmas sales, to enable them to do the click and collect, to enable them to do that digital marketing, because we want our independents to survive. You know, obviously, you know, uh, with the lockdown, um, the timing wasn't particularly fantastic for them. Um, but, you know, it, it, is a, it is a mixed picture. We've got some businesses who, you know, remodeling, looking at their business, adopting new technology, seeing this as an opportunity to remodel their business 
and drive forwards. So we're still getting businesses going through the scale up program, for example. You know, so that's fantastic. Before we move on to that, I'm going to bring the other panelists in because I'm sure we'll awesome. get up to a little bit of that. So thank you for now to Cam and to Michelle, and please welcome to join them our panelists, Victoria Nixon, Site Training Manager at Westinghouse, Neil Burrows, Assistant Principal of Burnley College, and a patron of Lancashire Business Week. We've got, excuse me. <coughs> Beg your pardon. We also have Moissa, founder and chief exec of Inforda O Group, and also a Lancashire Business Week patron. And we've got Susan Skurlock, chief exec and founder of Primary Engineer, here on behalf of Lancashire Business Week patron, Burnley.co.uk. Good morning to you all. And can I remember, remind our guests in the audience that your questions are welcome through the chat box? Good morning to you all. How are you? Good morning. Morning, Richard. Very good. If I may, I'm going to start, if I may, can I come to um, you, Susan Skirlock? Your role is to provide engineering skills, your, your job is to provide engineering skills and perhaps inspire engineers of the future. From what you've heard, how do you feel as though um, the world of work is changing and what should we be taking forward with us, Susan? Well, I think I've been very encouraged from what I've heard so far. The star schools sound absolutely amazing in what they're achieving. I think that we are seeing a massive change in skills needs. But at the end of the day, I think that we have an opportunity to encourage children to look around them and see what the opportunities are within the sectors. Engineering is growing at a rate that is just extraordinary. Data skills, security skills are all required and they can be brought into the picture. But I think it's that having that vocabulary that children understand that engineering is something that's appropriate for them and that transferability and resilience within it is something that we need to share with with more children to be fair thank you susan um neil burrows if i may how do you, i mean it's a big job is this because you sit right there there are you know, you've got employers who require skills you've got skilled young people who, who require employment but how do we ensure that employers and the skills providers like yourself are on the same page well yeah i think the main thing for me is the communication and the collaboration. I think if we go back six or seven months now, we made a decision as Burnley College to to start those conversations and, and, and real conversations. We have a real good employer network, a lot of businesses, and rather than talk about qualifications, as probably would be expected in FE, we talked about how we could support and work with businesses and align our future adult skills and all those all those qualifications and courses that we could offer to support the recovery. I think we um, we ended up creating a, a program called Destination Recovery from that. So uh, that, that's Destination that, Recovery, Neil, is that right? Yeah, Destination Recovery, yeah. Um, and part of that is is to support all, all the people, so people that have been made furloughed, people that have been made redundant, and also the businesses as well, to maybe give them that opportunity to, to look at the skills and sets that they have maybe change those skill sets to, to get employment in, in, in other areas. Michelle, we're talking about the numbers on furlough. We've worked closely with the Lancashire Skills and Employment Hub and, and we've listened to their, their reports and their feedback and the labour market intelligence things that they've been telling us all. And then we're relaying that to, to, to the businesses. Quite proud, I'm going to get Lancashire in. I'm quite proud of talking to all these people in Lancashire. It's great, the, the businesses are really wanting to, to recover. And I think it is about that collaboration and working and, and speaking to each other. And that's what we're learning. So we're learning all those things as we're going along and we're, and we're trying to set those programs up. It is working. We're getting people coming in. We're getting people coming out, going out into businesses now, supporting on management skills, upskilling, and looking at how they can diversify into new areas if possible. So it's that communication for me, Richard. Understood. Thank you very much. Victoria Nixon, you, you, you're you responsible for um, the skills base and the training base at uh, Westinghouse Springfields. I wonder if you could tell us um, how, are, how are the requirements changing within your industry? I mean, it is quite a rapidly moving industry. Well, it is, yeah, and we are working here at Springfields to, uh, to keep the lights on in the UK. So we've had to uh, continue with that whilst contending with uh, all of the new restrictions regarding COVID. So I think it's been mentioned already, but one of the biggest skills for our existing workforce has been moving online. Um, uh, and you know we have we have people in our plant facilities who who continue but but everybody else pretty much has has had to work from home so that that um digital skills that we were talking about before 
um, is, is def has definitely been important. Um, the particular skills that are required uh, in your sector, uh, in the nuclear sector, I, I appreciate that rather like a hospital, it's not just doctors and nurses, we have drivers, porters and many other things. And in your, your business, of, of course, but I think what we see when we think about nuclear, we think about nuclear energy and power. Um, what, what skills, how do you develop your skills? Do you work with outside providers? Is it an in-house operation? Uh, we do a bit of both, actually. We uh, we are in our 70th year of delivering um, engineering training, um, a level three craft apprentice training. However, over the last um, few years, we've diversified and we're working with other local universities and colleges, and we have chartered managers, digital technology apprentices, uh, laboratory technicians. And we're just talking this week, actually, about the 2021 cohort and again we're looking to diversify that that again and um, to, to look at both for uh, the, the you know new starters um, or for um, our existing employees how we can upskill them and, and somebody talked earlier about pivoting skill how we can how we can how we can change and 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 move so yeah we do a bit of both there's some we, we've been doing engineering like i say for 70 years so we think we're, we're all right at that but all of the other things we know that we need some help with so like i say we've been partnering branching out over the last few years with, with local colleges and universities and it's working really really well and that, skills, that's why. skills providers form an orderly queue at victoria nixon's door she's ready to talk i i'd say moisa good morning to you so let's let's talk about digital skills of, of your many uh, adventures in entrepreneurial activities mode. This is an interesting one because I, what I'm intrigued by this is the skills and employment connection. Perhaps you could describe uh, in 4.0 for us. Firstly, thanks, Richard, for allowing Cam and I to be on a panel together as chair and vice chair of Star Academies. We very rarely now get a chance to do a, a double, like as Cam said back in the day. We I, were... I do not want a flipping PTA meeting breaking out. Just well, saying. I was just <laughs> going to say, where are the biscuits and the coffees? You know, we we tend to uh, you know have those at our governors and, and, and PTA <laughs> meetings. But Richard, just to, I think, I'm I'm really you know I mean it's rare these days I get to so oh. of born and bred Lancastrian and, and and very proud of that and still living in Blackburn. Um, I, I realise I've got a bit in common with Freddie Flintoff in the sense that I wear Lancashire pads but play in Manchester most of the time and, and, and I tend to do that a lot. But I, I just have to say today, I, I'll give you an example about what Info Group's about because I think it's about people and I'll give you an example of one person which actually encapsulates the power of Lancashire and what skills collaboration is all about in Lancashire. Um, I'll tell you the story of Ben Daly, who's a you know, young man from Lancashire who went through our academy recently, won the academy that Michelle and her team have supported uh, through the Fast Track Fund. Um, we started Info Group as a joint venture with University of Central Lancashire to help this whole industry for digital transformation in the manufacturing engineering sector. And the foresight UCLan had to try and support our SME supply chain community at the time was brilliant because their partnership was pivotal to where we are today, uh, which is a leading provider, not only in the UK now, but internationally for that type of transformation. And then we partnered with BAE Systems, our, one of our biggest employers, one of our bastion organizations. And David Holmes there, he committed fully to supporting us in, in this endeavor because he saw that as BAE Systems is moving into the factory of the future, into 2021, 22, supply chain wasn't, uh, you know, doing so in, in as much um, without the investment or the support. So he supported and BA supported us with a, a significant sponsorship in our academy. We set that academy up in the new in this year at the beginning of January, and 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 we the whole premise was to support STEM graduates from our local universities into this boot camp environment to be employable and to transition into high skilled careers as engineers and digital champions. 50% by the way of those learners were female because the current stats are, and Susan does a lot of work in this area, um, that only 13% of our young women actually transition to a careers in engineering. And I know wow. Neil does a lot in that space as well at Burnley College. Nevertheless, through this collaboration and working with Michelle and Kerry and her team at Lancashire Lab, 
we put an academy together with sponsorship from Amazon and other major partners. And we took 70 graduates through that program. We had 400 applications from graduates at the time. And one of them was Ben Daly. Ben was a young man who put himself into university with two young children. And at the age of 27, graduated with the pandemic looming upon him. Dark, dark times, a mortgage to pay, no real future ahead of him. And he signed up for our academy. One of our clients in the academy uh, program were Inscape in Interiors based in Chorley, a joinery manufacturer, SME, on a digital transformation journey. Long story short, Ben went to BA Systems, did an eight week program with us on a future factory project. And now we've got him as a job as their digital champion at Inscape Interiors, a small manufacturer. This is how Lancashire can mm -hmm. come together and change people's lives. Ben's thank life has changed because of that. And that's what we do at Info Group. And, and uh, thank you ever so much for that. Uh, and a, a very good overview, which leads me on to a nice question, actually, uh, Mo, that's, that's come in. I'm going to ask you all for a very brief answer on this one. It's coming from Jeff Taylor. And I think he's really making the point here is this is the nub of it. It is also the responsibility of employers to connect more with their local secondary FE and HE establishments to advise about what skills their markets need today. This is my question. Um, do you get, as uh, those of you who are educating and providing skills, do you get enough input from the business sector? And do you think the business sector realises that they can input on you? Neil Burrows. I think I think the answer to that, is, from from my point of view, is yes. I think you just have to look at the panel here. We've got Cam from Star Academies. We've got Susan. We've got more, and obviously we've got Burnley the College as well. It's the full range of, of support for these people, giving the young people those skills, um, getting the employees to engage in that. Sometimes it has been difficult, but I think over the for us as well from Burnley the College over the past two or three years, that's come it's come critical. It, it's really really important, and I know that. The, the primary engineer and, and and all really good feeders into into giving those young people an opportunity to to understand what careers they want in industry. Thank you, you know, Michelle. Sorry, Sorry. I mean, Michelle, do you, do 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 you just do you see you sit in the middle and in, in some respects in this conversation? Uh, do you yeah. feel the conversation is a two way one? Yeah, I think there's probably more that we could do as always, but we do have our careers hub. Lancashire wide, 154 secondary schools, including our SEN and Prus and colleges, all of them as part of the careers hub. And they're matched with over 160 business leaders from the local community. Mo is one of our enterprise advisors and is with us from the, the beginning of the journey, which we set off on in 2016. So, you know, we've got a huge commitment from our business community but we need more and more businesses to engage, to provide inspirational activities, insights, encounters. And at the moment, we've had to pivot to virtual because we can't get businesses into the schools. We can't get young people out to undertake visits. So at the moment, we've got a big call out to our business community to support with that um, kind of aspirations piece to, to come and work with us and provide those virtual encounters and experiences to our young people and enable them to understand <coughs> the types of skills and opportunities that there are, you know, that are required. Thank you very much. I'm going to move on to another question from the audience. This is from Claire Cunningham at ADECO. Um, simple question. Uh, where are Lancashire's emerging markets? Where is the growth and what skills are going to be required? Mo, wh where do you feel the growth is coming and where do you think the skill, what kind of new skills are going to be required? Well, I think everybody said this, the, the, all industries are moving into a virtual technology cloud-based environment, whether you're a manufacturer or, or a retailer or, or whatever else. And I think those skills about upskilling existing staff, it's not just about young people and new people, Absolutely. it's about our existing employer community and upskilling them to be able to embrace these opportunities look people talk about the sort of doom and gloom of robots and and automation doing people out of jobs it's not the case uh we have a huge upskilling opportunity look at look at the way onshoring is happening reshoring is happening there are companies wanting to move now up to the north from the south there are companies looking to reshore their manufacturing into the uk back again there's the new green economy you know on the horizon 
and all of the energy uh, uh, technology, energy technologies. We have a huge opportunity in Lancashire. But one thing I would just say, one of the things that we sort of um, in Greater Manchester have a mantra to say we do things differently. And I do believe Lancashire should champion the mantra, we do things together, because together as an entire region with all of our assets to put them onto that pedestal, we could be global players in inward investment that will give our people those opportunities that are around are across the UK, whether it's the West Midlands, whether it's Greater Manchester or, 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 or Yorkshire, Lancashire, has all of the assets. One of the things I just find is that we're not as cohesive in our messaging as we should be. And employers should be at the front of this. You know, our employer community, our business community, some amazing businesses in Lancashire that are clients of, of ours, we should put them at the forefront and let them lead. And I know Steve Fogg as the chair of the LEP is doing a lot of work in that to try and bring that together in a cohesive message, which will translate into opportunities for our people. Thank you very much. Susan Skirlock, how do you feel that the demands are you, on you are changing in terms of requirements? Well, I, I think like anybody else, we, we're online um, in terms of the delivery of what we do. But I think in terms of what types of projects that we're bringing, we're looking at data projects because we feel that skills in schools need to have that, that kind of data um, experience for children. They need those data skills. But I think that just to... to rewind a little bit in terms of the way that business interacts with schools I think it's a great deal to do about the perception of engineering the perception of what jobs are and giving children the opportunity to see them there's a lot about the skills that we should be teaching in schools and that's got to balance with the curriculum that's got to balance with what teachers have to do what they have to deliver so what we need to do, I think, personally, is that contextualising of learning so that children can understand where it fits in the wider world and they get the opportunity to see the jobs and the careers and the roles in that wider world so they can decide whether it's something for them or not. And it's as valid for it not to be for them as it is to be for them. It's that wider experience of this is the opportunity. What do I need to be able to walk into that and plant in that seed as early as possible? I know we have this secondary, you know, higher, further and higher and all. Primary is where, for me, if we get that right, if we get that aspiration right and that inspiring, the skills will actually embed a lot easier as we start to move them forward. There will be that resilience that they need to go forward. Thank you very much. Um, Cam, for you, just um, modelling, thinking from your own business and thinking for the, the same in the next short to medium term in terms of the, the schools um what have you got your eyes on at the minute in terms of new new stuff we what we need to learn yeah i, I think I, I look at that in terms of short medium and long term um in in the short term oh, it was really pleasing to hear what michelle was saying earlier about in terms of the number of vacancies that we have because you know you, you do hear a lot about you know the unemployment and the potential unemployment as a result of the pandemic brexit etc cetera, etc cetera. so so in in, in, the, in the short term what i see is uh, a, a disconnect between the supply and demand um we, we we in our own business had two vacancies recently and i, I was quite shocked to um you know, uh, uh, how long and how difficult it was to actually recruit the right quality of individuals. Um, and, and, you know, the, both were apprenticeships. Um, and we filled both of them now, but we had to go look far and wide. You know, our, our business is based in Blackburn, and I would have loved to recruit somebody from Blackburn or, or, or around the Blackburn area. But we had to go further afield to get the right people. And these are for two apprenticeship positions. Um, so, so I, I think in the short term, you've got this situation where you've got lots of vacancies and you've got this situation where people are going to be made unemployed as a result of the, the, the current uh, challenges that we have. And somewhere along the line, there needs to be a, a bridge that says, OK, maybe reskilling, maybe bringing up you know making people aware of those all those opportunities so i think that's an easier challenge than it than it may seem well i think i think i have to say cam that i think you've just started a fantastic conversation there which i can just see blossoming um certainly with some people in this room and perhaps with those others outside i think cam you've just 
opened a door there in that last couple of sentences. And the reason I'm saying that is because Neil Burroughs is going, ooh, I'll have a bit of this. Um, now, finally, <laughs> before, just, just before we move on to, to um, close this, um, Victoria Nixon, your, your business is broad. We've talked about the digital skills. Um, are, is the nature of the, of the, are the nuclear skills going to be changing? Are there other, other things that you're looking at in terms of how you would like to take your skills agenda forward? Yeah, absolutely. So um, with the, uh, the the carbon neutral targets of the UK government, the recent announcements um, regarding green energy and nuclear clearly plays a, a massive part of that. Springfield is looking at developing a, a clean energy technology park. Um, and with that comes all sorts of skills that I probably can't imagine at the moment. I, I once spoke to a head teacher who told me his job was um, preparing children for the jobs that will will become available in the next, you know, 10 years in their lifetimes so that he can't even imagine what they are. And, and that's what our industry does. So with the Clean Energy Technology Park and, and the nuclear industry, you know, we are in Lancashire. We're halfway between Preston and Blackpool too, you know, big, big, you know, big cities in, in towns in, in, in Lancashire. Um, we're right in the middle of the nuclear arc, Lancashire, you know, with, with Cumbria and, and Cheshire and, and, and kind of North Wales as well. So, so we're right in there. So we're really well positioned. What some of those technological jobs may be, I can only imagine, but that's where we're back to having the communication skills, the, the enthusiasm, the, the interest, this broad, these young people who who might come to us, they might be in year seven now. You know, who, who knows what some of these um, clever jobs might be in in in, in five, ten years. Susan time. Skirlock hasn't decided what what skills she's going to give these young people yet. So you better have a chat with her just in <laughs> case she takes them down the wrong line. I'm saying. sure. I'm sure. I'm sure she won't. I'm sure it'll be good. But so so yeah, there's there's masses of opportunities in that field. And like you said before. Just because we are a manufacturing site or a nuclear site, there are lots of people here who don't do engineering yeah. and lots of other roles that are really important to keep our business and, and lots of other businesses going. So, so uh, lots of Victoria, many thanks for that. And, and thank you to you all. Um, we're going we're gonna to move on because thank you, panellists. And thank you, everybody, for your questions. And I'm sorry we couldn't get to them all. But ladies and gentlemen, that does conclude the formal business of today's Lancashire Business Week Breakfast Blast. But please don't rush off. We're going to be opening up for networking in a few moments. If it's anything like it was yesterday, it's a bit chaotic, but it's a lot of fun. Um, I've learned a lot today, but I think fundamentally the, the big thing I've really, I'm really going to hold on to today is that conversations are really important. There's some things being said today which I, I found absolutely fascinating. And I think what I'd like to hope is that some of the, well, the guests that we had today will be carrying on those conversations. Now, there's plenty more coming from us all week. You're welcome to join us. So please tell your friends that they can come as well. And before we close, I'd like to thank again all today's contributors, our speakers, Cam and Michelle, Victoria, Neil, Mo and Susan, our audience, our headline sponsor, CG Professional, and our patrons who are AMRC Northwest, Beaver and Struthers, Burnley.co.uk, Burnley College, Community Foundation for Lancashire, Daisy Communications, FW Capital, In 4.0 Group, Lancashire 2025, Bidding for the City of Culture, PDS Engineering. And I'd also like to thank our supporters and our media partners who are a utility group, sorry, my apologies, Utility Group, Downtown in Business, Lancaster and District Chamber of Commerce, and love local networking. You can read about this session online at lancashirebusinessview.co.uk later today. That'll be about in an hour or two. Uh, that'll be up online. We'll be back at the same time tomorrow. We'll be putting well-being and inclusivity under the spotlight. You can use the same Zoom link to join. So we hope to see you uh, right here with us. And if, you, if you'll just bear with us for a few minutes or probably a few seconds, we're gonna open up this, this platform now for networking. Uh, I've been Richard Slater. If you can buy it in Lancashire, buy it in Lancashire. See you tomorrow. It's been a hoot. Thank you. <laughs>